Thank you for tuning into Stepping Stones of Faith. Stepping Stones of Faith is a ministry of Claytonville United Brethren Church. Our service times are as follows. Sunday morning Sunday school starts at 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning worship starts at 10.30 a.m. If you would like to join us for any of these services, our address is 106 Elizabeth Street, Claytonville, Illinois, 60926. We hope to see you this morning. Well, I'm Pastor Josh. You're watching Walk Through the Psalms here on Stepping Stones of Faith. With me today, Shannon Bale over there in South Africa. We're going to be looking today at Psalm 46. Psalm 46 today, Psalm of the Sons of Korah. And it says, according to the Almoth, a song. This is a song. We'll be reflecting on some of the stanzas of the song today, the psalm today. And uh, expect to take some reflective look at ourselves and our hearts today. So, But let's open up with a word of prayer this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We ask, Lord, that you administer to us by your spirit. We ask, Father, that you would touch and bless us today. Lord, that you would touch this word to our hearts. Father, that you would glean a greater understanding of you through this word today. And Lord, you'd bless the hearer and bless us as we study. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3. I'll go ahead and let you start off with that, Shannon. Absolutely, Pastor Josh. I'm reading from the New King James Version, so we're going to start at Psalm 46, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3, and it says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake, with its swelling. What I see in this psalm, uh, Brother Josh, is this is just an amazing psalm. Uh, is often well known. This song is a is a confidence builder. It builds our confidence. And and uh, I know you've probably preached this psalm before. If you haven't, I know you will soon because after studying this, um, it is a very uh, a very good psalm to, to to build up your confidence in the power of God. Uh, it's a compass builder in the time of need also. And more times than not, we are in a time of need. But, you know, we need to depend on God. So he is everything we need, and he will guide us through those times. But it is a confidence builder in a times of need. When it seems that everything is crashing in around us, we can have confidence in our Lord and our Savior. The psalmist says, God is our refuge, our strength, and our very present help in trouble. Wow, man, I'm telling you, Pastor Josh, just saying those words really encourages me because I know that I'm going to come across times when I need uh, I need some strength, sometimes when I need a refuge, and I, and I know sometimes I can get my own self in trouble, or, I'll, or trouble will just come upon me from, you know, from, some, from an outside source. But I know that I have a God that is with me through all of that. And I believe that the psalmist is just giving praise to God because he is all of those three things. First, refuge. 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 God is our place of refuge. Often when storms in our lives come, we look for a place of refuge, don't we, Pastor Josh? I know I do. I look, and it's not all, and I'll be honest with you, I wish I could say every time it's God that I, that I go right to that, right to God first thing, because that's what I should do, right, Pastor Josh? But yeah, but I'll yeah. be, but I'll be honest with you, sometimes that just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't go that way for me. So I look for a secure place. Well, uh, that could mean uh, talking with our spouse. I find refuge in talking with my wife, Pastor Josh. I very much so do. Or with a friend, I find refuge in talking with you, Pastor Josh. Yes. Uh, also, about uh, about the, uh, you know, when I talk to the people like you or my wife or my pastor, uh, I talk to them about some troubles that are going on within me or some troubles that are around me. So 
there I will try to find some refuge, right? That I, I find mm-hmm. I find refuge in uh, in, in your uh, confidence. That uh, if I come to you with something that I want to talk to you about, that you you or my wife or my pastor won't go and just blurt it out to everyone in the world. But I have a confidence, you know. So so when it comes to um, a refuge, you need to have it, it builds in us a confidence. So if you have some people you can confide in. Or if you have a person you can confide in, that's good and everything. But really, where we need to find our refuge is in God. You know, I'm not saying we should. We should often speak with our spouse, our friends, those that, you know, we we can really trust in confidence, um, our pastor, people like that, that we have a confidence in that we... uh, that, that are godly people that would give us good. We've talked about that before, Pastor Josh, uh, that would give us good instruction, um, that we could have confidence in them. And uh, what I said then, it says, and then we will take the advice of those that we will take refuge with, and we should. I think there's a place for that, that we should take, uh, take I take uh, teaching from you. I was just telling you today, I listened to one of our walk through the Psalms, and it seriously encouraged me today. So, I received from the, you know, one of the uh, podcasts um, some some strength that I needed today. So, you know, I was learning from that. I was taking refuge in that. But let me challenge you with this, folks. I really want to challenge everybody. That means uh, Shannon. That means Pastor Josh. That means everyone. Um, let me challenge you, all of us, with this. Before running to others in this world, may we first find our answers in the refuge of God Almighty. Yeah. He is where our refuge, that's where our, our hearts and our minds and everything should go within us to him first. You know, it's so easy just to, because we see people or we hear a voice of someone very quickly, it's real easy for us to just run to someone else for refuge. I remember as a child, I would run to my grandpa for refuge if it was raining or something, or I'd run to a car, you know. Uh, to get in a car if it was raining, that, that was a place of refuge. But really what I, I think the psalmist is trying to tell us is we need to come underneath the shadow of God Almighty and say, this is my refuge. This is the, and that's the next one. This is my strength. That's where we need to find an, an understanding of refuge and strength. The next one is strength, Pastor Josh. God is also our strength when we have no strength left within us. And we just feel like we can't go on. I'm sure anyone listening to this, including us, Pastor Josh, Mm -hmm. that there are times where, man, I just feel like I can't move. Like I have been, I I just can't go on with what's going on, uh, maybe in our lives and things like that. The Lord will give us his strength. Mm -hmm. Listen, we have strength from God. We, 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 We also have, we have our, don't get me wrong, we have our own strength. You know, we can be, maybe I can uh, just say in lifting weights, maybe I can lift 100 pounds, you know, but that isn't the strength that we're looking at here. What we're looking at is that inner strength, that strength that only comes from God that makes you take the next step when you don't feel like taking a step at all or getting out of bed when you don't feel like getting out of bed at all. When we have done all we can do, we just need to stand in the strength of God. And that'll go back to some, uh, I know that probably just brought up a verse in you, Pastor Josh, Mm -hmm. you know, we need to stand in the strength of God. Yeah. And I'm sure it did. And I'm I'm going to, I want you to talk to that in just a moment. Uh, his strength never wanes or tires. God's strength never wanes and it never tires. He has an abundance of strength that he is willing to give you and I. Isn't that amazing? I just, I, I'm just amazed at how God is always right there with His strength in the in the in the time of a serious, uh, serious need. The third thing, help. Um, our ever helpful God, uh, He is an ever helpful God. He wants to help us. He wants us to cry out to Him uh, for help. Um, so many times when I found my strength depleted. Uh, and cry out to God, help. Often, I have just been depleted, and maybe I've uh, been in prayer about something, and I'm just seriously, seriously tired. I just scream out, health, or help. 
Lord Jesus, help me. And every time God is there to help me, Pastor Josh, every single time, just like when our children cry out for our help, and they do, so mm -hmm. we can cry out to our great helper. God sent his Holy Spirit to be our helper. I'm going to go a little bit into the Holy Spirit here because that is what God did. He sent us a helper. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, he died, he rose, and he went to heaven, but he said, wait, hold on, just, just, just wait, and I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit to, to, to move in your lives. So I now, as I understand that, I understand that I can receive help from the Holy Spirit. Now, that is one of the Trinity. That's the Trinity of God. It's all wrapped into one. He's part of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is. But we need to understand that the helper is always, always ready to help. He is never, he's never far away. He lives within us. We should always be asking for the Holy Spirit's guidance for our daily walk in this world. Oh, my goodness. If, if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit guiding me through a day, I would make so many missteps. It's not even funny, Pastor Josh. And then the very last thing I'd like to say about these three verses is he is very present. Oh, our God is so present, Pastor Josh. Hallelujah. I, I, I know you can hear the cracking in my voice, but I know even as I say that, that God is living within us and he's ever present in not just our need, but he's ever present in everything that goes on in our lives, not just when we cry out, help, Lord, help. And we should do that. We should do that on a regular basis because there's so many things going on even today in this world. And it was going on in the Bible times, too. You know, they needed help in everything, just like we do, Pastor Josh. But I had to say, we have a creator that is ever present. Hallelujah. There is no other religion that can say that, Pastor Josh, but a Christian. We have a God that is ever present. In, our, in, in everything. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into a bunch of other denominations. It's not even denomination. It's uh, religious thinking. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to tear nothing down because that's not what we're, what we're to do as Christians is tear other things down. But I want to tell you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, as the creator of everything that you see and the creator of you, um, Give him an opportunity today because he is ever present. If you will ask him, I, even right now as we are talking about this, Pastor Josh, I believe that someone is just going to lift up their voice to the Lord and say, I believe in you. And they're going to sense that presence that we're talking about, even right now, that very present help in time of need, because we all need that help, Pastor Josh. Yes. Not just in the time of need, but in all we do in our lives. Oh, yeah. Lord, let us not make any missteps. Um, the more we realize that he is always present, the more we will realize we need to be living a, right, a righteous life towards him. The more we understand his presence is real within us, Pastor Josh, the more we will want to live a life like he lived, like Jesus lived. The more we do that. Um, and in verses two and three, the psalmist says, uh, gives the, 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 uh, the acts of the natural disasters that are known to man and says, God is greater than any of these. Uh, fearing any of these things in some ways uh, robs God of some of his honor. So when we think of these things in, uh, in 46, when the troubles come like uh, uh, the, the seas roar and the mountains shake, you know, uh, the psalmist is saying these are very real things. These happen. But if we fear these things, in some, time, some ways, it robs God of his honor because we need not be concerned when those things happen. We need to understand that God said these, will thing, these things will happen, but find your, your help, your confidence, your, um, uh, your refuge within me. Don't worry about these. Some, don't get me wrong. Uh, these things will shake people. I've been, I've felt earthquakes. I've I've uh, felt like at one point I was going to drown in the water. But now with the understanding that I have where I would be with Jesus Christ, I don't think that fear is going to be quite as strong as it was, you know, when I was younger and didn't understand all these things of God. So I'm just saying it can take if, if we look at things 
fearfully in this world, it's it, it, it can sometimes take take away God's honor because we need not fear the things in this world, Pastor Josh. We need to fear God. But like like you said, and I even heard it when I was listening to the Psalm 85 podcast, that we need to understand that he is there in everything. And the fear is a reverence. It's not a fear of, oh, you know, he's the one that can shake the mountains. We should fear that. You know what I mean? He's the one that could, you know, say it's time to come home. You know, we could, he could say it's right now as we're doing this podcast, Pastor Josh, he could tell either one of us, it's time to come home to me. Mm -hmm. And there isn't a thing we could do about it, which is fine with me, you know, whatever the Lord, whatever the Lord wants to do. But I just want to say, don't, don't fear the things of this world for God is your refuge. He is your strength. And he is your very, very help in a time of trouble. Yeah. One of the things, too, that, you know, there's a lot that what you brought out that Mm. is very that speaks to what I've been studying myself, Mm -hmm. speaks to sermons that I've preached last week, last Sunday. Um, But one thing I want to bring up before I forget, you were talking about fear and how we fear things and and. how they can rob God of honor. And that's very true. And, and it's also, but it's also very true that we do feel fear from time to time. And that's a normal, natural thing. But I think what you're getting at is that we should never dwell on that fear as though God does not know where we are. And I, and I think that speaks to my sermon that I preached on Sunday. I, we, I stepped away from the Hebrew study and we preached out of Mark chapter four, and it was Jesus calming the storm. And I think a lot of what we're talking about here speaks to that scripture. We, we as believers go through life and we go through storms of life and fears and anxieties and things. But it's so important to understand that when we are believers, when we are walking with God, it is normal to have those feelings, but it's also very normal and very, for the Christian for the believer to snap to it and say, Jesus calm the storm. And I think it's important to understand that I'm not, now I'm not saying that we don't, shouldn't feel fear. We do feel fear, but it's important to understand that in those moments we can feel fear for a moment. Then we, we should shift our thinking to wait a minute. I'm walking with Jesus. Jesus calm my storm. Because if you look at that story in Mark chapter four, that was the very much the case. They were on the water. They a storm blew up, and and they were bailing water out of the boat, and they were fearful, and they were trying to get back to shore, and they couldn't do it, and it was all anxieties were high, energy was high. Uh, um, what do you call it? the the adrenaline was going, and all they could think about was here's Jesus over here in the back of the boat on a pillow sleeping. What's going on with this guy? We're over here dying, and he's asleep. You know, and and in their action, they said, Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? Save us. And he stands up. And that's where, and I want to say this before I say this other thing, but that's where we are. So a lot of times, sometimes we can get that way. Sometimes we can be, Jesus, don't you know? Don't you see? This is really bad. This is, this is really bad for me. And I need help. And Jesus then speaks to us just like he speaks to the others. You have little faith. You have little faith. And he stands up in the at the bow of our storm and says, peace, be still. But you see, the, the whole thing about that is I want to bring out is, you know, God is our refuge. You know, I, I think about, <clears throat> I don't know, I, I watch movies sometimes and I, I've watched Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring and all those things about three or four times. And there's a point in one of the movies where, they're running from the orcs and they're running and they and they end up going to this place where there's a tall tower and there's a cave at the top of this tower. And that was their refuge from the danger on the ground. And when, when Tolkien wrote that, he wrote that to be the type of, to kind of show Jesus our refuge above the trials of life. And so they went up to this cliff and this refuge and were up there to get rest. 
when we go to God with our fears, with our with our anxieties, with our troubles, and say, Jesus, uh, calm the storm, it's like we're climbing into the arms of God, away from all of the stress and all the anxieties, and we're allowing him to minister to us in that point in time. And that brings us in our in rest, much speaking to Psalm 23, uh, brings us rest, brings us strength to keep going, but it also brings us strength in fortitude to know who Jesus is, builds our faith. And you know, it this this thing where this, he is our strength, we are called to rely on that strength. You know, Second Thessalonians, I've been studying Second Thessalonians as well as um, as well as Psalms and, and Ephesians and all these other books for studying Hebrews. But Second Thessalonians is a call that transcends time. You know, when we talk about God being our strength, God being our refuge, God being those things. Second Thessalonians, I'm going to go ahead and read for context. I'll read verses 13 down to verse 17 for context. Uh, this in this in the uh, modern English version, which I'll be reading from. Uh, there's a section called chosen for salvation. And I want to make sure we understand that we're chosen not for death. We're chosen for salvation. God chose us for salvation, not for death. But he says here, starting verse 13, but we are bound to always give thanks to God for you, beloved brothers of the Lord, because God has from the beginning called you to salvation through sanctification by the spirit and belief and belief in the truth. To this he called you by our gospel to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15, we need to hone in on this. Therefore, brothers, stand firm and hold to the, to the traditions which you have been taught, whether by the word or by, the, by our letter. Now may the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and has given us eternal consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. A lot there. You know, you had spoken, Shannon, to standing firm. You had spoken to standing in and standing firm. This speaks to that. Ephesians speaks to that. Paul wrote Ephesians and Paul wrote the first, second, first and second Thessalonians. Speaks to standing firm. Standing firm in our resolve to follow Jesus. You know, why, why would we do that? Because when we do that and when we go to god with our troubles what does he give us he says now may the lord jesus christ himself and god our father who has loved us and has given us eternal consolation and good hope through grace comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work you know so many people have especially people in ministry go through a time you know i have gone through a time before not in recent days but i have gone through times in the past where i feel like well maybe i'm not called out to be a pastor maybe i'm not cut out maybe i'm really not called maybe i'm misheard maybe i didn't hear god and and you take those things to god and god comforts your heart god comforted my heart to where i understood and i knew that the call was real the call was there the call was legitimate through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that strength is there. They talked about in verse one. He is a well-proven help in trouble. He is. I'm living proof of that. The, the ministry of God to my heart is living is proof that he is a well-proven help in time of trouble. But now. Let's go into this here. Verse four. I've got everything I wanted to speak about one through three, but let's go through verse four here. Therefore is a river whose there, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the most high. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her in the early dawn. The nations roared. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. Listen, this is a powerful thing. Speaking of the power of God, here, there is a river and streams that make glad the city of God, 
there's a peace, there is a, there's, there's um, provision, there's all of these things that God gives us through this, through this provision. The river whose streams make glad the city of God. That's provision. That's, that's, that's blessing. I remember, you know, when, when people would settle the land, settle the United States, uh, majority of what I read, people would settle. And even, even when you make camp, when you go camping, you usually look for a place where there's water, where there's wood, and where there's dry, you know, dry areas where you can build a fire, you can get water, you know. That makes you glad. You're not too glad if you settle in a place where there's no water, you know, because then you can't clean yourself. You can't, you know, fish for food. You can't do things like that. So the river makes city of God glad. God's holy place is there. The holy, the holy dwelling of the most high. God is in the midst of her and she is not moved. She will not be moved. God tells us here. God is with us. God is all powerful. God is all gives us all strength. We we have we should have an uh, attitude in our hearts that we will not be moved. Yes, we can be uh, going through something and we can be fearful for a moment, but that faith in God should over over envelop us, and we should not be moved because He is with us. One of the things I said, I believe it was Sunday. <clears throat> Or Sunday night, I can't remember. But when I'm going through something, and this is this is a picture of my own mind. Sometimes people say that's a scary place to be, but picture of my own mind in this is that when I'm going through something, I I picture Jesus walking with me through whatever it might be, walking along a beach, walking through a meadow, walking through the woods, whatever, walking with me through this trial through this storm because he does because he does and as i do that i realize that he's with me and the trial of the of the day the trial of the of the week whatever the case will not move me because i know jesus is walking with me he is giving me the strength to continue on and then it goes on and he says he uttered his voice and the earth melted the power of god you know you look back in creation by his voice, earth was formed. There was nothing over except the water. The spirit hovered over the waters and God said, let there be light and boom, light. And then everything was formed by his voice. He didn't mold anything with his hands until he molded man. So by his voice is powerful. So we have to, we have to understand that, that just the voice of God can can make the mountains tremble that song that song did, did did you feel the mountains tremble by the by the voice of god he can make things tremble he can create things he can destroy things it's his power just in his voice just in his voice he doesn't have to be mighty and in, in fist mighty and just his voice just his voice can create and destruct just his voice so, yeah. Sure can, Pastor Josh. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, um, I just had a few things, I, I and I want to give a, uh, give give uh, the right things to. Uh, I, I study a lot, Pastor Josh, from the Enduring Word. When I'm getting ready for these Psalms, I often use the Enduring Word, and it has so many. Uh, uh, if you have a chance, just look it up in Google or whatever server you're using, and. Uh, uh, I would I would just suggest you go back and look at some of these things that I, I have I have uh, got a lot of I call them golden nuggets from from the enduring work because uh, they they will use um, Spurgeon and uh, some other well known um, well known people to uh, to speak to us you know about what the word actually says but uh, that's where I got some of what I'm getting ready to tell you now because I didn't know when I when I begin to study these things. Uh, through the Psalms, Pastor Josh, I, uh, I I'm just so amazed at how even in this in this Psalm, we're we're, we're starting to see God spell out what it's going to look like uh, for the new heaven and the new earth that we hear about from the prophets, and we also hear about from 
John the Revelator, you know, uh, one of one of Jesus' disciples, John the Revelator, he speaks to it. But let me just uh, let, let me just give you guys what I, I had written down here uh, be, because I think it really means a lot because we need to understand that Jerusalem is is a city that God seriously seriously loves, folks, and uh, it, it was a place where. Uh, he he had a, had a temple built to his name because that's where God said he wanted it done. This is where he wanted to be worshipped. But let me, but he can be worshipped anywhere, folks. Let me not take that away. He can be worshipped anywhere. He can be worshipped in your home, your car, wherever that may be. But in the Old Testament, um, they did worship him in 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 Jerusalem. But let me just uh, let's say this: as the psalmist starts verse four. He speaks of a river in the city of God. So the city of God, what we know is as Jerusalem, Pastor Josh. If I'm stand, let me know if I'm incorrect, because I have no problem with that, and we can talk about it. This is a very this is a very significant because there isn't a river in Jerusalem. Now this really caught me, Pastor Josh. In fact, there are only a few small streams in Jerusalem or, you know, around Jerusalem. I know that they have the Jordan River close by, but it wasn't actually in Jerusalem. So as the psalmist is writing the verse, he is seeing what the prophets Ezekiel and John the Revelator saw in their visions of the throne of God. This is neat. This, this is how the Old Testament and the New Testament really come together, folks. It, it, well, it comes alive to me when I start to read these things and study them. Uh, John, so Ezekiel and John the Revelator saw in their visions of the throne of God that a river would flow from the throne of God, and they there would be 12 trees bearing different fruit each month, and this fruit would heal the nations. This is what we have to look forward to, folks. And when a new heaven and a new earth come, uh, it will come... You will see all these things come out of Jerusalem. Understand that, that that is God's holy city. That is this, what does he say? He does say um, of the city of God. And verse 4 says, this, there's a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God. Well, they're, they're, they're talking about the city of Jerusalem. Throughout these verses, God is saying, my new Jerusalem shall not be moved no one shall de destroy Jerusalem again. Because God is in the midst of her, God shall help her. Hallelujah. He's still helping us. I mean, you, you can bring this to us personally that God's helping us also. But it really, if, if you get down to the brass tacks of the study, they're really talking about the new Jerusalem that's to come. Even though the I nation— wonder oh, go if ahead. They're, I wonder if they're talking about maybe maybe they brought this out in there. But I wonder if they're talking about the new Jerusalem. Yeah. Because it said are. that John, that's what John saw. So I wonder if it's talking about after, you know, not the not the physical Jerusalem, the thousand year reign, but the new Jerusalem after it's all said and done, we're up in heaven and this is the new Jerusalem. So that's what I'm I'm wondering. I don't know if we brought that out or if you even I don't remember if you even said that, but but uh that sounds like to me what they're bringing out here. It is, Pastor Josh, you're hitting that perfect. And I think I did bring out the fact that it's the new Jerusalem. And if I need to explain that, well, you just did. I don't really need to explain that. There will be a new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven in which we will all be in part of after yeah. the thousand year reign. Correct, Pastor Josh? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we're in agreement with that. Even though the nation's rage and other kingdoms have been moved, God will protect his great city, Jerusalem. And I, 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 when I'm thinking about these things, when I'm reading about these things, when I'm studying about these things, uh, I just can't help but think what a sight that will be. You know, uh, rivers flowing from his throne, these beautiful trees growing up everywhere. I mean, he gives us so many um, visuals of what things are going to look like through the prophets. We have seen that we have seen wars take place all over the world, have we not? The nations rage with power and dominance. That's what they want. They want power and they want dominance. But we must not focus on these things because with one word, and you said it just before uh, I began to talk, but, but with one word, uh, Jesus or, or God said, let there be light. 
and there was light. Like you said, all he had to do is speak it. Uh, and then God, but the, uh, the uh, just the other way around, with one word, with one word from his voice, everything can melt away. The Rockies can be gone. The Alps can be gone. They can just melt away. They're gone. If God says, if he made it with his, with his voice, what would, what would make us think that he couldn't destroy it with his voice? He will, and, and there, there, there will come a day when when this when this happens. But yet we find our our strength and our endurance and our help in try, time of trouble through God. The same one that can do all these things is the same one, the same God that says, "I love you. You're my child, and I don't want any of that for you because I want you to be with me in paradise." One of the things that that just blows me away is what you spoke to there, the the greatness of God, the the fact that his voice is so powerful, just his voice and all of the greatness and all the majesty and all God's all knowing, all, all powerful and ever present. We know that. But that mighty matchless God sees me and sees you and cares for me and cares for you and not not as a not as a group of humanity but as an individual you know and it kind of baffles me because he's so mighty and he's so powerful and he's out he's out there he's out there you know making things go but he's also here with me listening to my little itty bitty insignificant problems compared to what he what's going on in the the universe you know that baffles me so much because that speaks to the love that he has just not only for his creation but for for the individual and and listen if you're if you're listening to this today and maybe you maybe you maybe you're searching for god maybe you're searching for for answers you know people search for things all the time you know, there's a. I believe there's a place in a person. If you're if you're not a Christian, there's a place in a person who who has this quote unquote space in their soul in their heart that they're searching for their creator. They're 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 searching for answers, searching for something more than what they have. That something more is Jesus Christ. That something more is a relationship with Him. The fact that. The creator of the heavens and earth, the creator of the new Jerusalem and the new earth and at the end and the creator of all those things that we're reading about cares about you as an individual. So much so that he says that your hairs are numbered. Now, what does that mean? I had somebody ask me that one time. What does that mean? Does that mean that my numbers, my hairs have numbers on them? If you pull them out, you can no, that's not what that means. What that means is God cares about us so much that every fiber of our being is important to him. Every hair on your head is important. He loves you. He cares about you. He wants you to be with him for eternity. And if you're searching today, you don't have to worry about anything about that. Just trust him. He loves you. He'll answer. He'll answer. If you ask and you ask him with a humble heart, he'll answer you. He will. But we have to make that yeah. thing. That is so true, Pastor Josh. You know, in verse seven, uh, we didn't read it. We didn't read that. But everything you and I are talking about in the last two minutes, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and read verse seven because it speaks to that specifically. Um, it says, the Lord of hosts is with us. I'm going to say it again. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And then it says Selah. And we'll talk, I'll, Pastor Josh, I'm going to turn that over to you here in a little bit to talk about Selah once again, just because we had uh, spoke to it a little bit. But what I had very little bit to say about verse 7, but I said in these two phrases, which there are two phrases, the Lord of hosts is with us. And in the second, the God of Jacob is our refuge. He is the king of of the multitude of the community of all hosts. He is. He's in the midst of everything. He's in the midst of uh, our corporate worship. He's in the midst of our home worship. 
he's in the midst of maybe some of those things that we shouldn't be doing. He'll look at it and go, now, you know, you're not supposed to do that. But that's, that's him being in the midst of it. In my heart, when he convicts me of something I shouldn't be doing, when the Holy Spirit does that, that tells me he's in the midst of it. He doesn't like what, if I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing, um, he is very quick to let but his spirit, the Holy Spirit is very quick to convict me and say, now, Shannon, you know, you're not supposed to be doing that. And he'll do that with all of us, Pastor Josh. Some of those out there that would listen to this would say, oh, I'm not a Christian, but I bet you anything. There's been times where you go, man, I shouldn't have said that. Let me tell you something. There is a conviction of the Holy Spirit that can come to you without you knowing Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. He has given that to us. I'm not saying I don't want to get too, you know, get too deep into this, but there is right and wrong in this world. There is evil and there is good. You know, just like we saw in the cartoons when we were kids, Pastor Josh, there's an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other. We have a choice. You know, I think they were teaching us choices then. You know, even through cartoons, I think God was teaching me then. It was like little Bible stories for me, you know, in the form of a cartoon, simply because I knew I had a choice whether I wanted to do the right thing or the wrong thing. And I didn't even knew that cartoon. If they did the wrong thing and the, and the little devil thing went out, then, you know, he was going to do something he wasn't supposed to, right? So I think that's still the same for us. But yet, number two, he is also the God of the individual. He really is. He is an individual God. He speaks. You said it, you said it exactly how I almost had it written down here. He is, he, is, he is concerned for us as individuals. He made us, he made us in our mother's womb. He put us all together. He, he, it's, just to think of all those things almost makes me fall out in the presence of God because I just can't imagine how caring someone could be. I think I care for my children. There is no way I could ever care for my children more than God could. You know, I, I just, I, I've come to that understanding that I love my children with all that I am, but I know that God loves them more than I ever could because he knows everything about them. And uh, he's also, he's also has a personal relationship or he wants to have a personal relationship with each and every individual on this planet. He really, really, really does. He made you because he wants to have relationship. Over and over and over again, we hear him. We see him going to certain folks like Noah or Moses. He just wants this relationship with, uh, with, with his creation. So. Thank you for listening to Stepping Stones of Faith. I pray that you find value in this content. You can also find an audio podcast of this program on all the major podcasting platforms. Just type Stepping Stones of Faith into the podcast search bar. Once again, I'm Pastor Josh. Thank you for joining me today.